this video, we've got a diesel engine getting a full rebuild for obvious reasons. And before starting it, I wanted to flush the oil system out with fresh engine oil. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to be using a new tool I just bought and show you guys how to use it and what I think about it. Hopefully with good results. Hey guys, Josh with the Epic Channel. In this video, what we're going to be doing is pre-lubing a truck that I'm rebuilding. It's a C15 and it's been off for several weeks getting a full rebuild, but this would apply to any vehicle with an engine. Whether it's been sitting for a while or maybe you just wanna flush out the oil system because maybe you haven't started for a while or you don't know the condition of the oil or the oil's been contaminated or you're doing a rebuild. Anyway, found a very cool tool for doing that. I'm gonna show you what it is and how to do it, so let's get to it. So this is the C15 that I'm just getting done rebuilding. And you can see the oil pan's on, the oil pump's on, the oil filter is on, new oil filter. I have pre-filled the oil filter, I always pre-fill from the dirty side. It's got the cylinder head on, the overhead, the rocker arms, the Jake housings have all been installed. Overhead's even been adjusted. So previously I'd used the oil reels, but they don't work anymore. So what I'm gonna be using is this tool I found on Amazon. And the manufacturer is called All Star, and it wasn't very expensive. I think I paid $177 for it. And it is surprisingly well built. And it comes with a steel braided line and a couple fittings, and I'm pretty impressed with it. So this is what I'm gonna be doing. We're gonna be plumbing it into the oil feed line here to the air compressor, and that's the main oil gallery, which where the air compressor gets. And that alternator's not supposed to be there. And you can also, now this is C15 or 3400 specific, but you can also use this oil pressure sensor port here if you wish. Now, why is it getting a rebuild? You guys often ask, what's a lot of blow by? That's a lot of blow by. Yeah, this engine definitely had some problems. Number six cylinder was not firing at all. And of course, with this much blow by, you know it's not just a bad injector. So I pulled the cylinder head and yeah, pretty bad scoring there or a vertical cross hatch as some people call it. And so they opted for a full rebuild, which I was happy to do. Now something interesting I found on this, this had the worst cavitation or electrolysis, whatever you wish to call it. I usually call it cavitation. On the number one liner, look at all, they almost look like metal BBs and these shavings that look like almost little wires completely obliterated the side of this liner. Uh, damaged the block, also had to do some block repair. More than normal on this one. So interesting find, I've never seen that much cavitation before. So a little bit later in the day here, see the turbocharger is installed. So all the oil system is now sealed and installed and I've got the rocker arms exposed there so we can see if they're gonna get oil. Now, pre-filling the oil filter, I do not recommend it generally if you're just doing an oil change, but since this is a rebuild, we wanna get oil as quickly as possible. So we pre-filled it. Of course, we went from the dirty side, meaning the outer holes, that way if any contaminants do get in, gonna go to the clean side. Not gonna go to the clean side, I should say. So, this is our tool. Now, you might be thinking, oh, what did they pay you to promote this? They didn't. I actually bought this tool myself. I think I paid $177 for it. I checked Amazon today and I'll put a link in the description. If you are gonna get it, please buy it through my link. It actually helps the channel out tremendously and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So, all we're gonna be doing here first, and now I've never used this tool when I was recording this video. Never used it before. We're gonna be using CAT 1540. Like I said, the oil reels aren't working anymore. It's not Western State's fault. It's a problem with the oil reel company. But we've had to now use jugs of oil, which is a pain, but that doesn't allow me to pre-lube with the oil gun, so that's why I'm using this tool in the first place. So what I'm doing here is I put about a quart or maybe two in because I've never used this before and I want to flush out just in case there's any dirt or anything in this. I inspected it. I didn't see any, but it's a good idea. So, and I've never used it before, so before I pump this oil into the engine, definitely want to flush some oil out. So there's three basic pieces to this. There's the fill port there, and then you've got where your line is coming out with a ball valve, and then you've got this gauge and a Schrader valve. 
Now they have the gauge on already. That's very nice. They've thought a lot about the way they have this set up. You might notice there's a stand on the right on the bottom. That's there so it tilts slightly and all the oil goes into the line. Just good idea. Now some people might think pre an engine's a bad idea, but do you know who you're dealing with? I think it's a good idea. Now, like I said, we're just flushing it here and I have not used this before. So I'm a little gun shy about how much pressured oil is gonna come out of this line. Yeah. And we're at 20 PSI right now. Oh. Yeah, 20 PSI and this oil is cool. It's about 60 degrees and it's about 60 degrees in the shop. And that was about 20 PSI. Now it says it can safely go up to 100. The gauge goes up to 160. I'm not gonna take it past 100. We're gonna go up to 40 PSI. And let's see what that's like. That's better. Remember this line's fairly small, so it's only a dash four, which I believe is a quarter inch. So not that big. We could install a larger line and fitting and that would probably help the oil flow. You could also heat the oil up, that would thin it out and it would flow faster. But trying to keep it simple here, I've never used this tool before. So we're at 60 right now. 60 seems pretty good. Let's not uh, destroy our time and use 60 PSI. This week's Destruction of the Week is submitted by Chris. Thank you, Chris. And he's got a 7.3 international engine and it's got some problems. So that is an exhaust valve upside down into the piston. But what would cause that? Well, if you look on the right of the piston, I notice some odd shaped item there. Yeah, that's a nut that fell into his cylinder when he was changing the turbo. And, but yeah, that bad news, so. Be sure to cover up your ports there, folks. So what we've got is we've got two gallons of oil now after I did the flush, and this holds over two gallons. I tried to zoom in here to show you. It could actually take a little more, but I think two gallons is plenty to prime this oil system. So we've got our two gallons. We've got it plumbed directly into here. Now, some people might think, oh, aren't you forcing the old oil and any dirt that possibly is in this new oil into the new bearings and stuff? That's a interesting argument, but you have to remember that the engine as it sits is not loaded. There's no cylinder pressure. There's no real force of the crankshaft other than the crank weight itself. So, and we're about 80 PSI right now. Any contaminants are not gonna be forced necessarily into those bearings because the bearings are barely loaded at all just with the weight of the components themselves. So what we've got is we just turned it on at 80 PSI with two gallons of oil. And I mostly wanna check if we're getting oil up to the rockers, cause that's really the last place oil gets to. Now with that dash four line, it might take a little bit and it's cool. Now I've pre-lubed everything before while assembling, but obviously this is much better if you can. So we're sitting about a little over 80 currently, and this is about five minutes later. And looky what we got. A drip. Oil is getting up to our rockers. That is really good news. I was unsure if it, and look at that, it's even purging some of the oil oil out of the jakes. These jakes were reused. The cam and the rockers were replaced though. So it's good to see it's purging any old oil and stuff out. I did wash off the jakes quickly with some brake clean, but without completely dissembling, there's no way to get all the old oil out. And this is really good news. Now, if I were to heat up the oil or use a bigger line, it might potentially get more oil up to these. And these are the old bearings. This is what you're trying to avoid by flushing out the contaminants and also pre-lubing the engine as much as you can is any damage to the new bearings and components. And look at that, we're getting drips. That's on all the rockers. So that means the cam bearings are getting oil, the rockers are getting oil, the jake housings are getting fresh oil. Now, things that probably are not getting fully filled though are the oil pump and the oil pickup tubes because those are on the suction side more of the system and this is forcing oil directly into the oil gallery. So let's start her up. You can see I'm done here. Pretty good paint job. Even put the line back on. That's a good idea. Whee! So let's start it, see what happens. 
And I did prime the fuel system, folks. So that might be why it starts pretty quickly. So that was just over three seconds. And like I was saying before, the oil pump and the oil pickup tubes are not primed. So they still have to fill. That's why we had about a three second delay. And a three second delay after a full rebuild for oil pressure is really good. So what do I think of this tool? Not sponsored by them folks, but I love this thing. I'm definitely gonna be using it on my pre-start on pretty much everything. It gets the depth date seal of awesomeness. I would recommend you purchase this if you're building an engine. I'm definitely gonna be using it and would buy it again if I had to. I'm gonna leave you with this. Hey guys, Josh with Depth Tape Channel, and in this video we're going to be using a new, yeah. 